Thank you for joining our webinar tonight on athletic performance by Angela and Alifo. My name is Heather Schofield, and I'm the Medical Educational Director with Biomed and Terramedica. I'm pleased to be moderating tonight for my wonderful colleague, Angela and Alifo. She has a wealth of knowledge, and she has a knowledge base that is very different than the average practitioner. So she really does bring a new set of knowledge, but in addition, a new way of using uh, different products to be able to support your patients. She brings a sound scientific, academic, and athletic credentials. She has a Master's of Science from Purdue University, and she's also certified in biological medicine and Rubimed um, therapy. She works as a medical support manager for healthcare practitioners, um, including both medical and naturopathic doctors, TCMs, homeopaths, nutritional consultants, and many others. Angela was also an elite track and field athlete specializing in heptathlons and now competes in figure and fitness. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much, Heather. It's such a pleasure to work with her and have her introduce me. Um, to everybody that's joining us today, my name is Angela Analifo, and she's the four, that's my soon-to-be-married name. And I'm really, really excited um, to be presenting the webinar tonight um, on Recipe for Success with your athletic patients and athletic performance. And just a little bit about me, I have my master's in kinesiology and biomechanics, and I'm currently working on um, my PhD in sports nutrition and um, nutrition science. Um, a lot of my experiences with athletes and clients and patients has really given me the perspective and tools to really try and help them and support them so that they can be at the peak of their athletic careers and, and their athletic performances, and as this, at the same time, experiences from helping practitioners working with them on protocols has also given me tools and mechanisms to better help my clients and my athletes um, achieve the best they can achieve. So with that, uh, with that said, I would love to present and give you guys and share my knowledge about um, working with athletes and that recipe for success. So when we think of recipe for success, there's a few things that comes into mind. We're looking at, we're talking about the genetic makeup, the body type and density, and we're also looking at the proper diet and nutrition, supplementation, the exercise itself, the mechanism of which the exercise is conducted in, and sleep, it's all about recovery. And that's a big component that I'm going to touch on um, with this particular webinar. So what are athletic patients? Um, there's a couple of definitions I wanted to kind of bring to your attention um, from your elite athletes, um, your cyclists, your sprinters, your soccer players, football players. Those are your elite um, athletic patients. But the other spectrum is your everyday athletes, and those are the ones that you're going to see walk through your clinic, um, you see on a daily basis. These are your, you know, your 10K runners, your joggers, your police officers, your your gym goers, and your, um, you know, your weekend warriors, tough mutters, and uh, weight loss patients. Though they may dif differ in the sense of their elite level, but a lot of the mechanism and how the, you approach them and how you help them um, achieve that athletic success um, is very similar. Okay. And next, I want to talk about performance and some of the contributions and connections that tie and play into performance. There's a number of different things that you can look at that play into performance. For me, I just wanted to sort of highlight these few key points, and these are what I've noticed through my years of being a, an athlete myself and competing, and then through working with practitioners and the patients and clients. And performance, there are a number of different contributions to performance, supplementation, nutrition, your genetic makeup, the accurate type of training, overtraining and fatigue, water consumption, and mind-body connection is really, really important because a lot of us don't take the mind-body um, connection into consideration. And it's an area that really needs to be addressed. So with that, uh, with that said, I want to talk about and look at uh, the psychological mindset. Why do athletes train and compete? Why do they lose weight, build better bodies, and potentially destroy those bodies, if you will? Well, science is now showing that there are three main physiological factors that can influence sports performance. That's stress, anxiety, and self-confidence. And many of you, um, of you practitioners see that on a daily basis in your practice, not just with your athletes, but just with your patients. The stress and anxiety that comes in and plays a big component. Why is this hard for athletes? Well, there's, there's the drive and the need to always be the best. There's the added pressure to be the best from their coaches, their teammates, family, friends, and the media. And 
more importantly, the pressure on themselves because we are ourselves' worst critics, so we're always wanting to be better. Um, just a little quote that I wanted to bring to light is um, about psychology and the mindset. What you are thinking, what shape your mind is in, is what makes the biggest difference in all. And that applies for all aspects of um, athletic performance. Okay. Next, we want to look at the mind-body connection. As I stated earlier, the, the mind-body con connection is a really big component that I, I feel that a lot of trainers and a lot, a lot of practitioners don't necessarily address. And it's the balancing of the psyche and the soma, the relationship um, between the mental and physical domains, and, and understanding this and helping to maximize overall performance is really important to address with your patients, whether they're athletic patients or just your regular patients. Um, for an athlete to be to be better doesn't necessarily mean they have to train harder or longer. That's often a misconception. It could mean that they need to address all the different components that make up a successful athletic performance, which includes mental as well as physical training. Um, and since athletes don't enter into competition with a completely empty head, they also have to make sure that they include mental skills in their training and conditioning program as well. So essentially, for long-term success, you need to address and put into play psychological skills and brain health. With that said, brain health. What makes up brain health? There's a lot of different components um, with mindset and brain health. And these are just some of the key points that I want to um, touch on and illustrate. Um, brain health, sleep affects brain health. Exercise affects brain health. The physical health itself, um, the anxiety level, meditation, the new learning, whether it's a skill um, in a sport, a new play, if you're a basketball player or a football player, um, being able to execute that, Social connections, interactions with team members, interaction with the media, with the world, um, gratitude, that sense of knowing that that athlete is a good, good enough athlete and really believing that. And the one that I really want to touch on is the autonomic negative thoughts. That is a really big one because it's important as practitioners and trainers that we address that with our patients and help them to work that and help them to dissolve those negative autonomic th thoughts that they don't think about but it's constantly running. That's also part of brain health as well as the mind and body connection with athletic performance. Okay, so I want to shift gears a little bit and now start talking about more of the physiological components and nutrition that affects um, um, athletics. So at the start of a program and visit, when a client or trainer comes to me, and two of the things I look at, I'm looking at their body, the body type, the body density, and often um, most of us are familiar with um, BMI, which is body mass index, and then versus body density. Well, why, why body mass versus body, um, body density? Well, before we get that, let's define that a little bit. BMI is a common acronym given for uh, body mass index. It roughly calculates your weight and your height and sort of correlates the percentage of um, the weight that comes with the fat and opposed to muscle and bone. Body in, uh, density, on the other hand, is looking at the overall mass. It's looking at the fat mass. Um, it's looking at the, the, the tissues, the, the ligaments. Um, it's really important to address body density because it's it gives you a much more broad and clearer picture of that that frame that 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 athlete is in, and just before we move on, I just want to touch on a, um, a few different um, uh, tools and mechanisms uh, to measure body mass in this, as well as BMI. Skin fold caliper is a really common one. Bioelectric impedance analysis, the near infrared, um, DEXA scan. Um, hydrostatic weighing. There's some advantages and disadvantages of both, skin fold being the easiest to use than DEXA. However, DEXA scan is the gold standard. Um, the disadvantage with that is it can be quite expensive, and in order to be able to use that machine, either you have to be at a research institution or a university or college. So the, the reality of it is not unless you're working in a research or facility, it's harder to be able to utilize the DEXA and the underwater weighing. Okay. So personally for me, I like to use the skin fold caliper t um, testing and measurements and specifically measuring seven to nine sites because I find that that gives you a more comprehensive 
uh, view of where that patient and that athlete is coming from. A lot of trainers I know that I've encountered over the years tend to use the three, maybe five. Um, I find that that, is, that gives you a very incomplete picture. So the nine, the seven to nine site is more accurate. And then I plug it into um, the equation as you see for body density. Okay. The other equipment that I use in, in conjunction with uh, the skinfold calipers is the body composition and fat uh, analyzer. And this one is a really inexpensive one that gives you a very, very accurate reading, the Omarion body composition. Um, one of the reasons I like this particular uh, device is that it gives you a really good rounded um, image of where that athlete is, the body fat percentage, the BMI, the skeletal muscle, the visceral fat, and body weight. And now the other gold standard for body fat analyzer is this one by Tanita. That is a little more expensive, but some of my colleagues that are medical doctors and, and um, naturopaths tend to have this in their clinic. Um, it's a lot more inclusive. It's a lot more detailed printout and measurement um, from weight to percentage to body fat mass to fat-free mass, um, muscle mass, um, total body water, uh, the basal metabolic rate. And it's great because you have the, the adult mode and the athlete mode. That's important to recognize because the athletic mode goes into deeper. When you're looking at the tissue, you look at the fat mass. So it's different than just basically doing the height and, height and weight. Next, looking at the somatotypes, the body types and density, there's three main body types that we see, ectomorph, endomorph, and mesomorph. And some of the characteristics um, vary. So it's important to know those patients and those athletes' character as well as the body type. The ectomorphs tend to be your typical skinny, small framed. It's harder for them to put on weight. Um, they tend to be a bit leaner. They have faster metabolism. So it's important for them, the type of workout that really responds well to their type of body type, um, short and intense. Get the heart rate pumping, plyometrics, focus on bigger muscle groups when they're training. Um, and for them, it's important to eat constantly because the metabolism is constantly revving, catabolism. So they want to make sure that they eat before bed so that they don't go into that, the, the body essentially eating its own muscle. Next, we have the mesomorph. They're, if you will, that's the ideal body type that most people want to have, the mesomorph. Their athletic frame structure, very solid, build muscle really easily, um, pretty balanced metabolism. They're naturally strong. They gain muscle quite, um, quite naturally. Um, for them, it's important to make sure that cardiovascular health is, is elevated. Weight training and cardio go hand in hand. They have to be done together. They respond very well to weight training, and with that explosive weight training, um, supersetting exercises is really important because it helps to, um, to chisel and sculpt the body much better. Um, then you have the endomorphs. They tend to be your softer, rounder bodies, typically short. They have a harder time losing weight. They carry a lot of weight in the midsection and their thighs, and they have a much slower metabol metabolism. For them, it's important to balance their, um, their protein. They do better on a lower carb um, diet and a higher fats, so good fats to burn bad fats. And for them, it's important for them to do cardio as well as weight training. And I just wanted to illustrate just different body type variances, um, percentage, and, and the look, and for men and women. And then from an athletic perspective, there are a range of body type variances. From a bodybuilder who's 5'3 five, five, and weighs 135 pounds to a um, rhythmic gymnast that's 5'9 and weighs 112 pounds just to kind of give you a perspective of how that varies and ranges that and why body density is much more accurate than just BMI. And then next I want to talk about autonomic system and performance. And this is a really, really important part to address because most athletes are always on constant sympathetic hyperfunction. When you think about the sympathetic um, nervous system, you're looking at um, more of the catabolic state. So they're breaking down tissues, the body's tearing down, the energy is used for defense. Um, there's a lot of nervousness that spikes. 
And often the epinephrine and adrenaline are up. They're spiked, they're, they're revving really high. Um, in this state, there's an increased lactic acidosis, so um, it's important to be able to detox that out of the system. Um, in this state, there also the blood bicarbonate buffering system is very, very highly activated. Um, one thing to note is that patients with any sort of autonomic system disorder tend to have lower levels of VO2 max, that's the maximum volume oxygen intake. And this often is indicating a reduced physical fitness and at the same time reduced exercise capacity. So it's important to keep those system balanced. And then on the other side, we have the parasympathetic. In this, in this state, you're, it's anabolic. It's healing. It's regenerating um, the energy conservation for nourishment and um, elimination. With this system, acetylcholine is what's dominant. This is the system that you want your athletes to transition into, eating the meal, resting and regenerating. When athletes are in this system, there's an increased blood flow to their stomach, small and large intestine, the liver and the pancreas. The increase in, saliv in salivation and salivary gland helps to facilitate um, digestion and absorption. And this is important because when they're in this state and resting and relaxing digesting, there is a decrease in blood flow um, to the skeletal mu muscle. And when you think about it, if blood is pumping too much to the heart and muscles, you're not going to be able to absorb nor digesting your food very well. In that sense, Mother Nature is quite smart because when they're in a sympathetic mode and training hard and competing hard, um, the blood is directed to the muscle, to the skeletal muscles to help with the energy output. Okay. So then the autonomic system and performance, how to supplement those athletes. Um, I always test athletes. I'm, I'm fortunate to have the Reba device, and it allows me to test um, my athletes um, whether their sympathetic system is balanced or, or out of balance, so the degree of dominance and balance in it. And there are a few different valves and remedies that I use in that situation. Um, Simvita is a remedy that helps balance um, sympathetic hyperfunction. And in Annex Vita and Anx Vita is anxiety because that shows up usually when the sympathetic is high, that's also showing up. And, um, and chronic fatigue is a picture that you will often see with that. And then the parasympathetic, um, Paravita is a remedy that helps to balance the hypofunction. So they're transitioning, getting, having better REM sleep. Um, just an attention I want, I want you to note is that dysregulation in the autonomic system can also be linked to the, t the timing and training, the sleep cycle and the melatonin production in the body. Um, with a study done by Yamantaka and Al, and they, they looked at um, 25 collegiate level um, football players and their sleep, um, sleep cycles and training. And they found that morning exercises eventually enhance the parasympathetic activity because it allows the body to transition properly into sympathetic in the evening. And while training in the evening activated the sympathetic activity, so that resulted in poor sleep and not um, enough of the first and second um, sleep cycle and completely missing REM sleep. Um, so that affects the circadian rhythm as well as the mel melatonin. So it's important to, to note when your athletes are training, whether it's an evening training session or a morning training session, and then the intensity of that. Okay. Next, I want to talk about program typing, um, somatic type. And there's a number of different factors that I, I take into consideration when I'm creating a program um, for my athletes and um, during their season. And um, the program typing, there's about five different uh, pictures that I look at. Um, first of all, I'm looking at the body type, so the ectomorph, the mesomorph, the endomorph. Secondly, I look at the metabolic type. And the metabolic type is based on Dr. Kelly and Dr. Curtis Kuhn um, from the College of uh, Metabolic Science. And they've they have narrowed down that there are 12 different types of metabolic type, and each of these fall on the autonomic system. And um, there's four in each. So the vegetarian are the sympathetic dominant. The balanced type are, um, uh, tend to be a combination of vegetarian and meat eating. And then the meat eating specific type are the parasympathetic. That also affects how they metabolize protein and, and food. 
And then third, I look at the hormonal type. And I use the picture from Dr. Brivenel's um, hormonal typing. Uh, there's a questionnaire that I hand out to, pac uh, to patients and clients to fill out to help me determine their hormonal type. And the four main type in that um, picture is the thyroid, the adrenal body type, the gonadal, and the pituitary. Then on the, um, the fourth picture that I look at is the rubamed, uh, the emotional conflicts and constitution type. And I test them to see where, where that blockage is. And then I also look at the character typing because body type and character typing pair, how athletes behave and act also is a mirror of their character type. So from the choleric character type to the melancholic to the sanguinic and the phlegmatic. And so that's another picture that allows me to pair um, the body types as well. And then last but certainly not least, it's the pleosanum, the biological medicine constitution type. And the three main types are the mucor, the aspergillus, and the penicillium. So this is how I put together my program mapping, looking at all five of these levels. Needless to say, it can take a little while to uh, put a program together, but it's definitely worth it because you really get to tailor it to that patient, that athlete. And just to go into a little more detail, so for the ectomorph body type, they tend to fall under the biological medicine, aspergillus. These are your lymphatic type. These are your, um, your colder, slender um, patients and athletes. And from the hormonal type, they tend to be more thyroid body type, um, particularly hyperthyroid. So for them, because you want to put weight on them, um, a typical macro breakdown is at least 100 grams of carbs daily. Protein is one gram per kilogram of their body weight. And then fats is anywhere from 1.5 to 2 kilograms of fat per their body weight in kilograms. Next, we have the mesomorph uh, body type. And from the biological medicine picture, they are your penicillium, your mixed constitution type. They're a combination of mucor and aspergillus. And from the hormonal type, you tend to, I tend to see pituitary, thyroid, and gonanotype fall into this. So their macro picture looks a little different. Um, anywhere between 70 and 90 grams, and then protein, um, 1.5 to 2 per kilogram of body weight, same thing with their fats. And then the endomorph um, constitution type fall under the mucor. The mucor is your circulation, your congestive um, constitution type. With the hormonal picture, they tend to be more adrenal and thyroid. Granando, very rare, but the two adrenals and thyroid show up a lot. And they tend to be susceptible to adrenal burnout and fatigue and hypothyroid. So for them, their macro picture is a little different. They work better on lower carbohydrates, higher protein, and higher fats. Okay, and this is just a brief case study of uh, a client of mine, a female athlete that is a mucor endomorph constitution type. Um, her weight before season, and then her weight, her weight during season, and then her daily caloric intake and breakdown of her macros distributed over a course of um, six meals and always keeping a balance. Note um, protein, that I tend to have the higher protein consumption, um, the third and fifth meal, mostly because she does trainings around those times. So I want that to be flooded into the system and the tissues and the body to utilize and metabolize it much more efficiently. All right, next, I want to talk about sport type outputs and mechanism. Um, you're going to have a, a different range of athletes that walk through your, your clinic. Um, so just to illustrate from different um, uh, metabolic and different sort of energy system output, from your anaerobic to your aerobic and in the combination of both. So with sprinters, the fast twitch muscles, the anaerobic, um, they tend to utilize energy much, much faster and rapidly, and that's the phosphagen system. So there's a greater increase of lactic acid, so they deplete their threshold much faster. And when you look in the Krebs cycle and ATP, the, the anaerobic glycolysis is, is a really important mechanism for them because they utilize the glucose levels much faster. And then we have um, swimmers or distance, mid-distance type training, and they utilize the glycolactic acid system a little differently because it's a balance 50-50, um, anaerobic as well as aerobic. Um, so they're, they're, they're teetering in and out of those um, energy systems. So ATPs in production, anaerobic glycolysis, and carbohydrate is important for them to load properly. And then you have your aerobic respiration. This event that lasts 90 minutes or more. So 90% of the energy expenditure is 
aerobic, and 2% is anaerobic. So for them, carbohydrate glycolysis um, and lipid cycles are utilized a lot more and much more important for them um, to have. So it's important to keep those systems in mind in when you're tailoring your programs. And some of the energy system, just a, a quick definition, lactic acid threshold um, is the intensity of, of exercise at which there's an abrupt increase in blood lactic levels. O2 levels, often this is, you know, we bring in only 2% of that. So that is that gets depleted pretty quickly when you think about physical activity and um, high energy outbursts. And in the VO2 max, it's the maximum volume of oxygen that the body can deliver to working muscles per minute. And in O2 and stress and detox go hand in hand because the higher O2 levels that we can have in the bloodstream, the more oxygen that we're able to uptake, helping to detox, inflammatory uh, processes are decreased, and muscles and recovery is expedited. All right. Now, switch gears a little bit. So we go to choosing the right uh, supplements. Well, how do we choose the right supplements? There is a variety of different supplement companies, supplements out on the market right now that, and a lot of them have different claims from increased muscle strength and burning fat. And this can often lead to confusion, not just for your athletes, but even yourself as practitioners and trainers. Because, you know, just because something says it's a fat burner doesn't mean it tests well, and it's good for that particular athlete to use. The right supplementation is just as important as eating clean. And so for me, I like I said, I always test. Um, often I'll have athletes come with bags and bags of different supplements, and I test all of them. And often about 80% of them do not test well. They're congestive. So when I'm testing their vital energy and I use um, the Reba device as a, a an Ultrasound frequency, uh, the vital physical energy is tested on delta waves. So when I'm testing the supplements on that, it gives me a picture that allows me to see, okay, are these supplements actually increasing the vital energy or are they decreasing it? And that's going to give you a really good picture whether that supplement is appropriate for that athlete or not. And I only administer the ones that test for them. And that way, you trust me, you save your patients and your athletes a lot of money um, so then, which now leads me to supplement type and choosing the right supplement for a body type. Ectomorphs, um, from the Biological Medicine Constitution, I, the, ple, uh, the pleonidrosan, it's a big tuberculinic lymphatic. Tem, tends to, they tend to do really well on this, on this supplement because they tend to be colder. This helps to balance and regulate that. And because they're hyperthyroid, um, lycopose from the Nestman line works beautifully to balance that. Um, and then with these uh, body types, Female tonic works well for them because it's a hormone regulator and balancer and works really well in cases of amenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. A lot of your female athletes that are ectomorph body types tend to um, suffer from amenorrhea because they go periods of time without menses. And the leaner they are and the lower the body percent, fat percentage is, the higher the chances of having amenorrhea. On the flip side, there is the, those that have dysmenorrhea, the pain um, with the menses. A uh, female tonic balances those really, really beautifully. Um, that remedy is from the Nesman line. Then from my mesomorph body type, pleomusato from the biological medicine is great. It's a glandular endocrine um, product. So the hypothalamus, the pituitary, it really helps to balance. And, and um, for sort of the anxiety and vegetative um, component, it balances that really well. They tend to also have more hypothyroid. So biothy is a glandular um, product from Biomed that I find that tests really well for these um, athletes. And keep in mind, too, um, I'm, I'm working with their naturopaths. Um, you're checking their the TSH levels to make sure that they're balanced. And then they also tend to suffer for a lot from adrenal um, fatigue and burnout. So ASL is an adrenal um, support formula and adrenum are another formula that I, I will test to see which one will show up. And then endomorphs, uh, very similar to mesomorphs um, in the hypothyroid and pituitary female tonic. For them too, I tend to, um, I'll add the thymus EG or thymokil because that um, the thymus gland is looking at the immunity as well. That tends to show up, especially when it's compounded with the chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. 
The other two remedies that I like that work really well because they're glandular are cytozyme AD and ADB5+, and this is from Biotics Research. Um, I like it because it's the neonatal, and so it really helps the body rebalance and regulate really well. Again, it's all about testing to see what shows up. And next, I want to shift gears, and I know you guys are <laughs> excited about this part, um, anabolic steroids. Um, as much as you don't want to admit this or, even, or know about it, a lot of your patients, a lot of your athletes are using some form of this. And I'm not just talking about your elite athletes. I'm talking about your everyday Joe Schmo that goes to the gym. I'm talking about your Tough Mudder, your Weekend Warriors. They use this. So it's not just bodybuilders that use anabolic steroids. The everyday person uses it as well. It's a big craze in, in Hollywood. So just to open your eyes a little bit on that, um, and anabolic steroids are man-made versions of testosterone, male hormone used for building bigger muscles. So knowing that, there are different reasons why patients and athletes take this to increase muscle, to enhance their performance, to get that competitive edge, to have that leaner, more vascular look. Weight loss is a big one that why some forms of anabolic steroids are used. And in a lot of cases, anti-aging, um, a lot of uh, diff different forms of anabolic steroids are used because of that. And in here, I'm just going to run through a list of um, some of the, um, the you know, top steroids um, that are on the market and their different names and what they're used for. Clenbuterol, or Clen as it's known, is, is a very popular one. This is also popular in Hollywood. Um, originally, it's a bronchiodilator, and it's, a, it's a typically used for fat loss. Um, it has an anabolic-like effect, but it's really not a steroid. It's not the typical anabolic steroid. It has a similar mechanism, but it's not. Um, Clen was originally developed by a European pharmacist um, and used for sinus, chronic sinusitis, bronchitis, and later on with higher dosing has been found to help increase fat loss thermogenic capacity. And so that's a staple one that um, a lot of athletes like to use. Um, the next is VAR or Anavart fat-burning steroid, it's a better option for women uh, because it doesn't increase the size. It, it helps them cut, and there's fewer side effects on that. HGH, which we are all very familiar with, been around, been used for quite a long time, fast recovery, um, increased metabolism, anti-aging, another big one, um, craze in Hollywood. Again, a lot of your athletes and patients will use these. And then Droll. Droll is a, a considered in the bodybuilding world a very extreme potent um, steroid for size and strength gain. Uh, Winstrol, um, D-Ball, Halo, these are some of the other common um, steroids on the market. And um, basic picture of these are harder muscles, ripped look, vascular look, muscle growth, um, leanness. That's what, you know, they're used for bulking as well as cutting. And then um, the one that I want to kind of touch on a little bit is Winstrol or Winnie. Um, the typical use for that one is for strength and endurance uh, without the unwanted mass and, and enhancement. Um, Winnie is a big one that you'll find with other elite athletes, not necessarily bodybuilders. Because it doesn't have the mass, um, they can get lean and increase the strength and endurance. So when you look at, you know, football players, when you look at track and field athletes, swimmers, um, cyclists, this is one they use. And if you guys remember back um, when Ben Johnson was competing, I apologize if I'm aging myself a little bit, um, this was the steroid of choice that Ben Johnson tested positive for um, because he was able to increase his strength, his speed, over like a year, so fast. And in that Olympic, he beat the American golden child, um, Carl Lewis. Needless to say, guess what? Carl Lewis was also using a um, form of anabolic steroid, but Ben Johnson happened to get caught. So with that, sprinters will use this type of steroid because it doesn't add the mass, but they do get really great results for strength and endurance. All right. So as practitioners, it's easy for us to want to pass judgment when it comes to patients using steroids. And it's important to recognize that you want to, you want to give them advice and educate them instead of judging them. Um, everybody has their reasons for using steroids, and whatever it may be, as a practitioner, therapist, and trainer, it's part of your job to help to support them. Um, you know, educating them on the long-term uses and damage that it can cause, fluid retention, 
kidneys, hardening of the muscles, heart, blood vessels. And I have to stress, I have to stress, steroid use, as practitioners, you want to detox, 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 detox. I can't stress that enough. Detox is important. If they use it, fine. Post-season, detox. That's, that's key. And then there's, this, then there's the psychological impact of steroids. Why is it hard? Why are they taking it? Well, like I said, it stated earlier, the competitive edge, the strength and endurance, staying at the top, being elite, and that aesthetically pleasing and superior physique. On the flip side, from the psychological um, component, is the body dysmorphic disorders. And you see this a lot. And studies and research is now showing now that it's becoming prevalent with high school athletes, that body dysmorphic disorder in steroid use. And so it's important to be able to counsel your patients and your athletes on that and then educate them on the long-term effects. And uh, because ultimately they're training and they want to achieve a certain aesthetic and be a top of their um, their sport, and then you need to address the long term effects of that. All right. So to start of a program, whenever any patient comes to me, an athlete client, this is I always always do organ testing, and I test the cellular milieu, the cellular matrix, the mesenchyme to see how the body is reacting and firing. And I have to thank um, a dear practitioner, um, colleague, and friend of mine, Dr. Loretta Kershaw. Um, she has really really helped educate me and given me the tools to be able to understand the processes and mechanism of this very well. And having the opportunity to percept her with her has really really allowed me when I'm addressing this with my clients to to really target that properly. Um, tissue acidosis is a big component when you're working with athletes and with the oxidative stress that they undergo, um, the acidosis increase with um, the amount of protein being consumed. And so when I test, um, there's special test vials that we have um, called the acidum lacticum vial. Um, it allows me to test the um, tissue acidosis, so from the most um, acid uh, met metabolic um, sort of dysregulation, disruption. And then there's a few remedies that I use to outbalance that, which I'll talk about more um, uh, later on in the presentation. And then the detox testing. Um, when I test the organs, I always test the detox um, organs. I'm looking at the liver, the kidneys, the lymphatics, the adrenals, uh, the gallbladder, and how that affects. I always keep that in, in mind when I'm doing the testing. And the supplement, that varies because I filter with the organ and the supplement to see if it's dysregulating or disrupting that organ. All right. So setting them up to win, always detox first. At the very start of any competition season, a weight loss program, I get the body ready. This is necessary because the, the liver often is overloaded and gets overloaded even before you start with them. So it's important to support that. Um, I, there's a couple of different detox kits that are out on the market, and perhaps I'm biased, but I find the Nesman detox kit works really, really well. It addresses the liver, the kidney, and the lymphatic. Um, these three products and uh, remedies work very synergistically to, to detox that. Um, the other kit that I, I often will use is the gut cleanse bark. Um, but I have to say that I tend to use that towards the end of the season more than at the beginning of the season. And I also like cellular detox from AOR, works really well. And then so the role of water with um, detoxing and competing and athletic performance. Um, never underestimate the power and the importance of water. Most athletes tend to focus only on nutrition and their macros. Um, however, proper and correct water intake is vital for all athletes, not just athletes, it's vital for everybody, um, but athletes in particular because they're constantly depleting and eliminating their water levels, and so it's important to replenish those. So the role of water, besides cellular communication, um, water is a primary vehicle for transmission of chemicals, the hormones and nutrients throughout the body. So it's a medium that's responsible for sending and amplifying any sort of electrical wave and patterns and transmitted information to cells in the body. Um, when we think about glycogen and think about water, in every cell there's one molecule of protein to every 10,000 molecule of water. And it's the water that holds the double helix, so the source of, our, of who we are. Um, water copies and memorizes. Um, so when we think about that, one molecule of protein to every 10,000, that's a lot. And so when you think about glycogen stores in the body and the, and, the, and the liver, and if 
the protein source is one molecule to every 10,000, so it's important that water is replenished. So to know that for athletic patients, it's important for them to consume at least two to three liters of water minimum. And those patients with higher muscle density or they tend to be taller um, and have higher energy expenditure, increasing the water consumption from three to five liters is important. So then with water, then you think about alkalizing, the, the cells, the milieu, the, the pH. Um, for me, I, I often like using the, the urine test and testing the pH because the body's pH is different from the cell's pH. So the acid and lacticum allows me to look at the cells, but just um, the urine allows me to look at the body's pH, which is a, a different pH um, level. So I tend to test when they start the first two to three days, a weekday, and then one weekend day because depending on what they eat, that would affect the, the pH level in the body on at any given point. Um, the second morning urine is what I use because I find that is more accurate. The first can give you a, a false reading just because our body goes through a natural detox um, when we are in our REM sleep. And so when we wake up, there's a higher level of uric acid in the system. So you're going to tend to have more acidic reading and in some cases more alkaline, but that's a false positive. So the, the second gives you a better picture. And then, so these are just some of the remedies, alkalizing and energy boosting remedies that um, I use and I, I love and I think they work beautifully, um, especially from the biological medicine perspective. Pleocitrochil, it's a citric acid that works on the Krebs cycle, um, really helps to increase cellular metabolism and blood viscosity. Pleosanuvis, my favorite <laughs> um, remedy and product from the uh, Pleosanum line. Um, Sanuvis is really it, it, it shines because when you look at Sanuvis, uh, the physiological ingredients, it's got the L positive and the D negative. And the L positive helps to neutralize, it's an isomer that neutralizes um, that debilitating, if you will, the lactic acid D um, that builds up in the skin and then allows the body to, um, to detox it um, through urine and sweat. And so, and Sanuvis is also an alkalizing A remedy that's quite gentle, um, and yet you're increasing your cellular respiration by over 300%. So Sanuvis is a really good one. And in pleoform, for the older patients um, or older athletes and weight loss, this is great if they have any sort of rheumatic conditions. It's also a gentle alkalizer. For energy boosting, um, optimum B12, it's a high potency sublingual lozenge, five milligrams of B12, Great. It assists in metabolism of the carbohydrates and fats for increased energy. Really amazing product to use. Salvtonic is the newest member to Biomed. The last couple months I've had really good results with salvtonic and microcirculation. Because um, when you think about it, increased microcirculation, it also helps to increase oxygen transport into the bloodstream. And when you do that, you're also helping the terrain and reducing um, oxidative stress. And the D-ribose is important to use because it improves energy metabolism on the cellular level. And I really like the one from Douglas Labs. And then these are other um, alkalizing remedies. And I want to sort of um, highlight this one a little bit and before we move on. The lactobacillus porogenes. It's a probiotic, but it's quite unique because it helps to normalize pH. And um, with that, it helps to multiply other healthy bacteria in the gut much very quickly because it's, bio, um, it's metabolically active in the intestine. So it, pro it produces that positive spinulatic acid, which neutralizes lactic acid buildup. Um, I use this a lot with bodybuilders detoxing them from steroid use, and this I will touch on a little bit later. All right, next let's shift gears to fat burners. What are fat burners? Fat burners are meant to enhance energy, burn, you know, increase in metabolism, and um, help with weight loss. Everybody in the fitness industry uses a form of fat, um, fat burners. And these are just some of the fat burners. And again, some of, a lot of the mechanism is leaning out, burning the fat, increasing thermogenic, thermogenesis, um, burning the fat. And um, you get ranges from caffeine to L-carnitine to um, green tea. So 
Um, there's a couple that I want to highlight that are my favorite, perhaps I'm biased. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's series Iron Cut. I really like this fat burner just because of some of the thermogenic capacity, but I like that the formulation helps to support healthy estrogen balance and cortisol levels. And then the other one I want to note is Magnum Nutraceuticals Heat and Heat Accelerated. Um, it's a, quite a revolutionary product if you think about it um, because they've really taken care to support the adrenal glands and endocrine, which is a bit of an oxymoron when you think about thermogenics because thermogenics and the high increase of that put stress on the autonomic system also stresses the adrenal um, glands. <laughs> so to have a product that will increase thermogenesis yet supports these organs um, uh, it's uh, it's actually a really good way to to do it to look at it. Um, so those are the two that I wanted I really wanted to highlight. All right, thermogenics and anxiety. Um, it's inevitable with a lot of athletes. Um, the increased heart rate, the irregular heartbeat, lightheadedness, and anxiousness. And again, I test on the Reba device um, to see about the autonomic sister system dysregulation and anxiety when it comes to using thermogenics. And often Anxio Vita or an Agon Vita shows up, and this is from all forms of anxiety. So I like to dose about 12 drops of this two times daily. However, in cases of extreme anxiety, um, uh, you can increase the dosing uh, as you see fit as a practitioner. And the NeuroVita sometimes shows up, and that's for pain and nervous tension, but it also will show up when there's chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. Um, so that's another remedy that I like to use um, when and the anxiety um, is prevalent. All right. And these are just some thermogenic mechanisms from acetylcarnitine to green coffee bean, creatine, um, nitric oxide. And just a, a little note on creatine. Um, when you have an acid on creatine, if they have – I've been diagnosed with any form of kidney disease or diabetes, um, there should not be taking any form of creatine because it contraindicates with that, and often it will worsen um, their symptoms. So just a note to keep in mind is the mechanism of how it affects um, uh, the blood flow um, into, the, into, the, into the cells and how uh, it regulates. All right, and so these are just some protocols that I've put together, and um, like Heather has stated earlier, this will be emailed out to you guys on different natural thermogenic stacks for different um, uh, exercise and energy output, uh, from aerobic to endurance um, to your court and skill-based athletics, sprinting. And as you'll notice, Citro and Sanuvis are a staple. I use that for any sort of fat burning stack, um, natural fat burning stack, because you know, I'm alkalizing gently and I'm also working the, uh, the Krebs cycle, increasing the energy ATP. The one thing to note that as you're increasing cellular respiration, you're also going to be increasing lactic acid threshold. And so that's why Sanuvis really comes into play to neutralize that. And because it neutralizes it, that's where you get the increased cellular respiration with both the Citrakil and Sanuvis. All right. And then next, choosing protein powder. There are tons of these out on the market. How do you choose? And some of the, the key points that I often will educate my clients on when they're looking at protein powder, besides testing, because I still do test, um, you want to look at the protein per serving amount. You know, does it contain other nutrients such as BCAAs or silk amino acids? Is it heavy on sugar, fats, and calories? And what's the price? What's the make? And what's the quality control and quality assurance um, from the manufacturer? And so it's important to keep that in mind um, when uh, purchasing and getting protein powders. And then when you test, um, you can take a look at the labels. And so I just wanted to list out some of the like 10 popular, most popular um, protein powders out on the market. My bias, <laughs> I, I, I like, all Max um, Nutro, uh, Nutrition, all um, the Isoflex, and then Magnum Nutraceuticals Quattro. I like Magnum because the Quattro is four um, strains of whey isolate, and it's time release, so the body's able to utilize it at different times um, during the day and the process, and it's gentle. And to note that some athletes do better with animal protein. Um, if that's the type of metabolizer there are, so if they're a, a parasympathetic dominant, so they would do better with animal protein. 
and then there's the vegan protein. So this is this is really important because there's more options now on the market for athletes that are vegan and vegetarian to be able to get quality protein um, into their system. And so I've listed out the 10 um, top and most popular protein, uh, vegan protein. As you can see, Vega 1, and I really am a fan of Vega's um, sport protein, uh, performance protein, tests really well. And then the other question you want to keep in mind, which is better? I get this question again. Um, Pea protein, hemp protein, rice protein, soy, which is better? Well, soy I'm not a fan of. Um, it's estrogenic, so I tend to not use that um, with my vegan athletes. Um, um, pea, hemp, or rice, it depends. Some would test for one versus the other, and I administer the one that they test for. And then sleep and recovery. Sleep is important when you think about athletic performance. Um, less than seven hours of sleep lowers total blood flow to the brain. If you recall earlier when we talked about brain health, sleep was a big component. Metabolic and immunological consequences of sleep deprivation, well, this will point to um, antioxidant imbalance. And with that imbalance, you, you're at greater risk to free radicals in the body. And, and so sleep helps the body to metabolize and detox and then neutralize um, any form of um, free radicals. And it's important for those that regulate, uh, exercise regularly and your athletes that they ingest food that are rich in antioxidant. If not, there are some really great um, antioxidant um, supplements and remedies out on the market that um, can be utilized to help to supplement that. Okay, so uh, just a bit more I wanted to touch on in sleep and recovery. Um, sleep, besides it being great, <laughs> Um, really helps to improve performance, reduces stress and the risk of depression, um, strengthens the immune system. It, this is really a big one, really important. It allows the body to heal in recovery and it helps in weight loss um, because that's the, t that's the time that the body really, really can recharge, regenerate, detox the day's um, congestion and really kind of reset. And at the same time, when sleep, you're also looking at balancing the autonomic system. I know I talk about I, I talk about the autonomic system a lot because it's important. It comes up a lot. It's it's something that should be addressed um, constantly with your athletic patients because they're always teetering. Um, most athletes tend to be sympathetic dominant. They're in constant fight or flight. Um, it's hard for them to transition back into parasympathetic. So sleep and recovery is a really high component, a big component to balance in that. Again, Simvita and Paravita, um, these help to regulate. Um, I, I prefer to use these besides just 5-HEP because Simvita balances sympathetic system and Paravita balances parasympathetic system. It helps the body to regulate itself um, besides just masking a symptom. And so the dosing I use for those typically is about five drops three times daily, or in some cases, I would do 12 drops twice daily. Paravita, five drops in the morning and five drops at noon. Because it's stimulating, you don't want to dose that any later in the evening because they won't be able to sleep, and so it will actually disrupt their sleep. Um, it's stimulating the day so that the body can transition um, in the evening. And then the other supplementation that I, I will consider um, is melatonin. Um, not everybody will, will, will need this, but if they're having sleep issue, issues, and I'll test to see if the melatonin will show up. And Biomed has a great, great um, melatonin formula, um, our melatonin plus B6. It's a 10 milligram um, for B6 as well as 10 milligrams for melatonin. And one sublingual lozenge a night um, use, tends to do the job really well. And then the Venus Sativa also has a nice, nice sleep aid. 40 to 60 drops of that in water before bedtime works really well um, to help uh, as patients and athletes get um, much needed rest. Um, just to note, um, and it's really important that even some of the athletes that are listening that results don't happen during the workout. Yes, you may get a great pump and you may feel charged and that vascular uh, muscles is bulging, but you need to understand that when you're refueling and when you're sleeping, that's when the body really does the biggest change. So it's important that athletes treat the sleep schedules as strictly as they, as they stick to their training and workout um, sessions. All right. Next, I want to talk about balancing hormones. And um, most athletes will 
go through some form of hormonal imbalance, um, whether they're male athletes or they're female athletes. That's just the aspect of it is, is it's almost inevitable, if you will, but it can be avoided with proper balancing, um, testosterone and estrogen. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of different testosterone products on the market, and I try to keep it as as natural as possible. And um, so one of the ones that I like to use um, is the DHEA by Biotics Research, um, really great at balancing testosterone. Tribulus is also a really good one, um, and the dosage is, um, is listed. Um, estrogen metabolizers, a lot of female athletes, especially if they're fitness competitors, sprinters, um, jumpers, and that's, there's some more musculature and aesthetics involved. Um, there's, an, there's always an increase in spike in testosterone, so the body's always battling to balance out estrogen, thus increase in estrogen. What you really need to do is actually bring up the progesterone to, um, to balance out the estrogen. But in such cases, then estrogen metabolizers um, can be used and warranted. Female tonic, again, great hormone balancer. Um, Pleomusato, microcirculation endocrine, again, really good at balancing the two together. And I also dim. Um, DIM I really like because it is a really well-rounded and natural estrogen metabolizer. And again, below you see I've put together some typical protocols that I've, I see with um, some of my athletes, um, depending on the picture that presents itself. Um, with hormone balancing, femotonic Musato ASL, which is adrenal support formula, um, and then another protocol is DIM with Sable. Sable Thyrolatum is a Nesman product um, for ovarian pain, but it also helps to regulate um, female hormones as well. Great one. And then for dysmenorrhea, and I am one of those athletes that also experiences dysmenorrhea, and this protocol has worked really well for me and a few of my female um, clients. Uh, female tonic um, with Cytozyme O and F, and that's a biotics product. Um, it's a neonatal cytosine ovary and cytosine female. And then Pleo Usti from the Sanum line. Um, Pleo Usti helps with um, dysmenorrhea and amenorrhea, cramping and uterine bleeding and spasm inflammation. So I found this protocol to work really well in um, um, helping with the dysmenorrhea. All right. So then I want to shift speed to repairing. Every athlete goes through some form of injury. Um, and so it's important to to repair and so that they can get back onto the court, get back to training. And, and there's the component of just keeping them at bay so that they're not injured in the first place. And these are just some of the, um, the products and the supplements that I like, um, that I have tested well with my, with my clients and patients when it comes to repairing and regenerating the musculoskeletal. Clarizyme, great, great um, proteolytic enzyme uh, product. Uh, it really shines because of the blend of the proteolytic enzyme from three different sources, plant, a fungal, and animal. This really helps to reduce inflammation, swelling, and sports injuries. And a typical dose for that is two capsules, two to three times daily. Clarizyme pairs really well with Flexizyme. And Flexizyme shines when it comes to ligaments, joints, and tendons. And um, so on the one hand, you have inflammation, systemic enzyme, and then you have the repairing of the joints and healing so these two shine really well together. No for clarizyme, it's bad, it's, it has to be taken away from food, otherwise it acts as a very expensive um, digestive enzyme. And then NAG and acetylglucosamine, uh, it's a naturally occurring amino acid, really great, important in the formation of connective tissues and ligaments. So um, when there's more cartilage damage than ligament, I would, I'll choose NAG plus Ligaflex. And then MSM glucosamine, um, this formula I, I really like because of Boswellia and the evening primrose. It helps to really expedite and, re and reduce pain and inflammation. So uh, a typical dosing of that would be two capsules two to three times a day. Glutamine is a must, um, not just for repairing and regenerating, but glutamine is important for immune boosting. Um, so that's one that every athlete should be taking um, at least five to 10 milligrams a day at the, at the minimum. Fish oils are really important. Astrocryl and toco are really good ones. And soft tonic microcirculation helps with repairing oxidative stress, transport, really important. And then chronic fatigue and burnout. A lot, this is, this is one area that you're going to see with your patients. Um, 
burnout is, it happens. For some people, it's just inevitable. It depends on the duration of the season and the intensity of the athletics and the program that they're involved in. And burnout is the body's um, protective mechanism against any unnecessary and potentially dangerous long-term stress. And so a lot of uh, um, research is now showing more and more the correlation with overused injuries and training and how that correlates um, with fatigue and adrenal fatigue and burnout. And so if you see here in this diagram, just illustrating adrenal fatigue, um, some of the characteristics that will show up um, over training, psychological problems, physiological problems, performance problems. And it's important for, for practitioners and trainers to really recognize that and, and, and address that. Um, often when a patient is starting to get into the burnout stage, there's certain markers or certain signs that will become very prevalent um, in the performance. They, will have, they tend to have slower reaction time. Hockey players, they're not as um, explosive. Um, physiological problems, they're more prone to injuries. Um, their immune system is always compromised. Um, they tend to sprain and the muscle cramping and spasm um, a lot more because and then the sodium potassium pump doesn't function as optimally when they're in burnout state. And then the physiological problems, you tend to see more mood swings, irritability, um, some insomnia. Um, their cortisol levels t um, tend to increase and sex drive, the sex drive decreases significantly. And then, so these are just some protocols that I've utilized um, over the years that have worked really well with, um, with patients. Uh, glandulars work really well. And um, on, if I have a, an athlete that's doing a prep um, for 12 to 16 weeks before they compete, um, I will always support the adrenal because I want to avoid the burnout to begin with. So I'm, I'll dose them with adrenum and ASF and cytozyme. And then to the last four weeks before, that's when the body is really on sympathetic hyperfunction and the burnout would start happening, then I, I will dose them a little bit heavier um, with the glandulars. Um, the other remedy that I've, I've recently started using that I, it's been really, I'm pleasantly surprised at, at the results is, rib, um, is rubus. Rubus is a pancreas... Um, uh, and diabetes to remedy, but the other aspect of it is it's really great for severe metabolic dis disturbance. So Rubus together with hepatica for li liver detox, I find has been working really well with some of my adrenal fatigue um, uh, patients. So just thought I'd throw that clinical pearl in there for you guys. And then think immune system. Burnout also ties with immune system, repairing the gut, immunity, Probiotics is a must. Um, glutamine is a must. Digestive enzyme is a must. And because, and when you think about the gut, you also think about the acidity levels of um, of athletes. They tend to be a bit more acidic, so it's important to address that, repair and rebalance the gut. And then, so again, I've put together some protocols to um, to show you some of what I've used in the past and what's worked, and also on feedback on um, from colleagues and practitioners that I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, again, I test them on the Reba device, these, these remedies. Um, it's important to know that athletes and athletic patients are always on the brink of an immune, immune system threshold. The more fit an individual is, the easier it is for them to um, catch a cold or get sick. Crazy, right? Absolutely. Well, this is because the body's defenses is diverted. It's diverted to support the muscles. And energy expenditure takes a great amount of time and energy out of the immune system. So it's important to keep that balance and keep that revving. And then here's more protocols from the biological medicine perspective, the pleosanum. Um, sleep nutrition, immune, and anti-flu remedies go hand in hand. And it's important to, to illustrate that and keep that balance. And this is applicable for all season, but especially during the winter season, it's even more important that to up their immune boosting capacity. And then um, just to shift gears a little bit on, on, on microbes. And, you know, research is now showing more and more that um, microbes are a lot more important than we would have given them credit before. Most of us tend to focus on macros, but micro minerals are really impor important. And these are the most important minerals um, that athletes need from calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, selenium, so sodium, and zinc. And their benefits range in from building stronger bones and muscles and tissues, minimizing um, uh, fatigue and stress, 
and they're essentially considered a, a life source. And um, this, this slide I really kind of want to illustrate because I think it's important to understand that there are certain supplementation and remedies that every athlete um, should be taking, and these top 10 are a must. D-ribose, um, that's 15 grams, five, time, five grams three times daily. Coenzyme Q10, really important. Glutamine, acetyl-L-carnitine, vitamin C, vitamin D, omega fish oils, B vitamins. Um, this is important because athletes burn through B vitamins really quickly, especially the explosive sports. Multivitamins and minerals, magnesium. Some additional supplements that you could um, potentially add to that regimen um, is vitamin E and iron. Um, a thing to note is that most athletes are deficient in vitamin E um, and or they're low in calcium and iron. Most female athletes need to be on some sort of iron supplementation uh, because of the, there's an increase in the com um, of compromised iron status. And th this is often due to um, the heightened or increased iron loss through menstruation when they're um, competing and when they're training and exercise-induced mechanism. Um, a lot of female athletes will get exercise-induced anemia, um, and a lot of blood is lost through the menses, and a lot of iron is lost through that. So it's important to keep an eye on, on that particular iron level on your, with your female athletes. And then what to eat and knowing how to eat during athletic performance. The timing of nutrition intake is important. The setup, the time of refueling and carb loading and cycling is really important um, to optimize um, for the body's performance. And so as practitioners and trainers, um, it's important to be aware of that mechanism. And when they're training in the morning, when they're training in the evening, competing, how do you cycle them properly um, so that they're getting the best out of their nutrition? And then, and so this, this is just a kind of a, a brief clip and synopsis of how um, to cycle some of your, um, your patients' proteins and fats, um, amino acids. So before any physical activity, roughly around 20 to 25 grams of protein is, is really good because keep in mind, the body can only metabolize, uh, metabolize 30 grams of protein per hour. So giving them anything more is almost a waste because it's just going to be detox, but it's also congesting the amongturies and elimination pathways. So avoid that and actually just give them the amount that the body can metabolize and process. During, um, during competition and training, amino acids are actually a lot more important than the protein consumption itself because a lot of amino acids and trace minerals are lost during because of all the sweating. So it's important to replace that and replenish that. Um, and fats um, at the end help to with oxidative stress. Um, so fats is important to replenish at the end um, post-workout. And then so this I've just kind of illustrated um, different carb cycling options for different um, athletic events from sprinting to fitness and bodybuilding, aerobic endurance um, events, um, court and skill sports. Um, loading, and these will vary depending on those particular um, um, athletic events. And then um, detoxing, post-competition. This is so, so important, so, so crucial when it comes to supporting these athletes and these patients. And you want them to live beyond just that gold medal, beyond that, just that trophy, um, because Without detoxing, the body is just congested. There's a, a recirculation back into the tissue, back into the limit, ligaments. So when it comes to detoxing the steroid, it's important to take it gradual. Studies have shown now that um, there's been increase of suicide from teen athletes when they're, they come off steroids much too quickly. So it's important to detox them and wean them off slowly, but then implement the detoxing protocols. Um, from the Pleo line, um, Pleo Muscar is an amazing, amazing remedy um, to detox um, from drugs and medication and five drugs three times daily. Um, I like to pair Muscar with the Nesman Detox, which looks at the liver, kidney, and lymphatic. And so in that one is 17 drugs three times daily. And then, and then when, I, when you're looking at detox and that, but you also want to look at the microcirculation, self tonic comes into play. And that's only one capsule twice daily. So keep that microcirculation going while allowing the monkeries to detox efficiently and effectively. And, um, you know, as you guys know, a lot of your patients that 
use any form of steroids, there's always that, that combating acne breakout, whether it's on their back or on their face. And Luvo's powder works really well. Um, it's a natural earth organic um, um, volcan volcanic um, powder. It really helps to pull the toxins out. Um, and then I pair that with Pleosan Acne and then from Biotics NutriClear. So those three together really helps them to combat the acne breakout. Um, so the dosing with the Luvos, they can take the capsule orally and then the powder topically. And the detox protocol, minimum three to six weeks, minimum three to six weeks post-competition because it allows the body time to regenerate and re, um, reset and rebalance. And then so this is just more different um, detoxing protocols that I've used in the past and, you know, practitioners I've been so kind to help me with as well that they find works with their patient. Um, Cerevi from the Pleosanum line, great metabolic waste and inflammation um, remedy, um, especially inflammation in the GI, circulation of the mucous membranes, really, really big. Because when you look at some of your athletes, um, especially bodybuilders, they have that distended gut. Um, it's it's the damage to the um, to the mucous membrane. It's the damage to the microflora, and the distended gut is because of it. It's that inflammation. Often, when you have that inflammation, you also have to think candida. There's a candida overload because you've killed off the um, the healthy microflora. Well, candida now is now running rampant. So, from the biological medicine approach and aspect, you want to downregulate candida. You want to balance the milieu. You want to balance the terrain. You want to repopulate healthy organism. So Cerevi works really well, and then Pleofort, because Pleofort works um, on gastrointestinal mucous membrane and really helping the inflammatory process. So those three I, I use really well. And then Gut Cleanse Pack. Um, this I only will add in if the athlete is testing for it, but if they're severely congested, then I will add this one because the 3C um, Complete Colon Cleanse really helps the body with that. Um, so... You know, I hope you guys are able to utilize some of these protocols because I know they've worked really well for, for me and, and my clients and patients. And then last but not least is um, besides detoxing, it's the integration of food back into the body and the system, um, healthier foods, smaller portions, more balanced po portions, increasing the veggie intake, reintroducing some fruits and vegetables, and helping to minimize weight gain, um, especially with some of your fitness um, competitors. Um, it's really important that you balance them out. And if they're on a low-carb diet, um, slowly introduce um, carbohydrates back in 20 to 30 grams per day increment. Ultimately, you want to reset and rebalance. You want to detox the season and supplementation burden, compromise organs, and um, rebalance and resetting. Um, Increase small increments and detox is key. And um, with that, you can guarantee that you'll be able to help and support your patients and to give them the best um, that they can to be more successful in their athletic endeavors and to make sure that you're always supporting the organs and always supporting um, the body to regulate and rebalance itself. Um, I've put together some um, natural recipes um, for electrolyte um, sports drinks, some um, protein cookies, um, uh, natural nitric oxide boost, all through here, and this will be available for you liver and, um, and detoxing shakes that I think you'll find um, work really well with your patients as well. And for the vegetarians and, and um, vegans, there's some gluten-free ones too. So <laughs> I didn't forget you, not just my meat eaters. Thank you so much for listening to um, tonight's webinar. And um, I hope you were able to take some things home. I know for me, it's about increasing performance, improving fitness, and detoxifying, and helping my patients and my clients be the best athlete that they can they can be, not just from the physiological standpoint, but also balancing the body, the mind, and giving them what it what they need to perform optimally. So I hope you all enjoyed tonight's um, presentation.